Now, this is uh, something that is uh, very, very academic and mundane. Now, let's try and attach the interpretation of uh, these two expressions. Why exactly we get these two expressions through a simple pendulum? Now, let us uh, try and uh, give uh, physical significances to both these terms. Now, let's get started with that discussion. Now let's uh, look at a very, very important idea because uh, we have uh, made it very clear in the beginning of the discussion that every Laplace transform that you talk about must be the Laplace transform of uh, the response in uh, the time domain of a system. That means uh, it must be derived from the differential equation of the system, right? Now that idea will make it very, very clear in case of uh, Laplace transform of uh, sine and cosine. And here, uh, I request you to go back to your basic physics, engineering physics, where uh, you have dealt with both uh, free and uh, forced vibration. We are uh, selecting uh, one uh, simple situation where uh, a mass is attached to a ceiling with uh, a linear spring of stiffness k and it is uh, made to oscillate. And you can see that uh, we are using x to designate its motion up and down. And uh, this is the mean position, which is uh, the equilibrium position, where uh, the displacement uh, from the mean position is zero because it is in equilibrium position. And as it moves to the maximum amplitude, you can see the velocity goes to zero because here at the mean position, since the kinetic energy is maximum, your velocity is maximum. Now, the question is, why am I emphasizing on the initial conditions? That is very, very important if you are trying to convert a differential equation into uh, uh, the Laplace transform form or you are trying to uh, reduce a differential equation to algebraic equation in terms of yes, right? So that is the idea. Now, if I write the differential equation for uh, this particular system, what it is going to be? It is going to be the inertia of the mass d square x by dt square and then multiply by mass this will give you the inertial force and that must be equal to the negative of the restoring force minus kx remember that uh, k is a linear spring and uh, therefore uh, if i looked at the differential equation of this in the most simplified form it's going to be dt square plus k by m x that's equal to zero you can designate uh, k by m by any parameter but we uh, did mention that this is nothing but natural frequency of the system in the initial discussions or uh, this is something that you have learned uh, throughout your plus one plus two and engineering so therefore uh, this is something uh, must be obvious to you you can uh, designate it by any letter i would like to designate it by letter a it, it would be more appropriate because we are talking about the Laplace transform of uh, sine at cos at. Remember that. So therefore, uh, how this equation gets translated plus instead of uh, omega n square, I'm putting a square and then x, this is equal to zero. So this is uh, uh, the differential equation whose uh, time domain response could be either cos at are sin at. This is the differential equation of the system whose time domain response could be either sine or cos. And how do you determine whether it is sine or cos? It entirely depends on the boundary conditions. It's going to be sine if uh, things incept from the mean position. It's going to be cos if things incept from the extreme position. That's very, very important. And one of the advantages of this discussion is that you will also get a very, very detailed idea as to how to deal with the differential equations using Laplace transform because that is one of uh, uh, the components of your curricula. So therefore, uh, this is going to be very, very useful. Not only you are appreciating physically what is going on, but also you are learning how to deal with a differential equation. Now, let's uh, try and convert uh, this into Laplace transform, the algebraic equation. So how do you do that? That is using uh, the boundary conditions. So now the equation on hand is uh, d square x by 
dt square plus you have uh, a square and then x that's equal to 0. Now if I seek the Laplace transform of second derivative, remember it is given by s square x of uh, s because I am talking about the displacement to be designated by x. So I am getting x of s minus s into x of 0 that is your initial boundary condition minus x dash of 0 right so this is what exactly you are going to get when you seek laplace transform from dx uh, d square x by dt square you can either look up for the formula or you can visit uh, our uh, discussion on uh, differential equations for a detailed derivation of this so this is what uh, we are going to use here and then if i seek uh, the laplace transform constant is uh, going to remain outside and this becomes x of s and that is equal to 0 because uh, if you are trying to evaluate the Laplace transform of 0, it's going to be 0 because uh, 0 into anything is 0. If you integrate 0, it is going to be 0. So it's a matter of common sense. So the RHS uh, continues to remain 0. Clear? When I took Laplace transform for the second derivative, it is s square x of s. x is uh, the term that we used for de uh, designating displacement minus s into x of 0 minus x dash of 0 a square x of uh, x of s now what is what exactly you mean by x of 0 that is nothing but the displacement when you incept uh, at whatever point you incept that is you are uh, incepting at uh, the mean position the first situation the second situation is you are incepting from the extreme position so what would be uh, this how exactly this equation uh, gets uh, uh, you know uh, simplified if I am incepting from this mean position. What would be the value of uh, the velocity? Velocity is going to be maximum, but uh, what about uh, the displacement? Displacement is going to be zero, right? Very, very clear. This represents velocity, this represents uh, displacement. So displacement goes to zero, but the velocity remains uh, uh, maximum. If I say the velocity is of uh, uh, value one, just for uh, uh, the, uh, discussion uh, I'm uh, saying uh, the velocity values a are 1 whatever uh, you can put but in our case what should we put here you have got uh, uh, the uh, sine a t that is omega n natural frequency is replaced by a and here also the natural frequency is replaced by a so therefore uh, it would be more appropriate to put uh, x dash is equal to a so if I simplify this what exactly I would get a square x of s okay and plus a square x of s and uh, this goes to zero obviously you are starting from the mean position this goes to the rhs and let us say that is a that is a and uh, therefore uh, what happens if i simplify i'll get the expression for uh, the x of s which is going to be a divided by s square plus a square right this is exactly the expression that we got for uh, the sine 80 the laplace transform from sine 80 so therefore uh, when you reduce the differential equation for a spring mass system it can be even for an lc system that is if you are an electrical engineer instead of this you can consider an lc circuit because l indicates uh, the inductance which is equivalent to mass and 1 by c indicates uh, the stiffness the equivalent uh, term in electrical engineering and you can clearly see uh, since we incepted uh, with uh, the from the mean position the solution of uh, uh, this particular differential equation is y is equal to sine a t and of course if you uh, assume the amplitude to be one unity then this is uh, the solution if you are incepting uh, any simple harmonic motion from the mean position, that simple harmonic motion is represented by y sin 80, which is nothing but the time domain response of the system. So it is a natural uh, vibration. So there is uh, no uh, forcing function that is uh, made zero because it is natural uh, vibration. And therefore, uh, this is uh, uh, the Laplace transform, which is nothing but the Laplace transform of uh, the time domain response 
of uh, this particular system it is just perturbed and left and it starts oscillating on its own so therefore uh, this is exactly the interpretation so next time whenever you confront uh, the laplace transform you must appreciate the fact that it belongs to a system that is the uh, differential equation is reduced to an algebraic equation okay now let's look at uh, what happens uh, if i consider this in uh, and apply it to a situation where uh, your motion incepts from an extreme position not from an equilibrium position and in an extreme position what happens your amplitude is maximum but uh, your uh, uh, velocity is zero and what i have assumed the amplitude to be one right so now let's uh, see what happens so if i write the uh, laplace transform of uh, the differential equation now that you are familiar with minus s into x of 0 that is uh, the initial amplitude and then uh, minus x dash of 0 and uh, plus a square into x of s and that is equal to 0 as usual when you take uh, laplace transform of 0 it is 0 now look at the uh, boundary condition that is where i have been emphasizing that boundary conditions are very very critical for uh, laplace transform whenever you are dealing with differential equations here the mass is starting from the extreme that means there is absolutely maximum displacement no velocity because if it were to have velocity it would have stretched further because it is stopping and returning because the velocity or the energy is fully exhausted common sense right so therefore uh, this obviously goes to zero and amplitude we have assumed to be 1 and that is where the velocity also we assume to be omega n itself because omega n into amplitude will give you velocity and uh, since omega n is a and amplitude is 1 we assumed uh, the maximum velocity to be a itself right so that is what uh, we assumed previously so here the amplitude is 1 uh, uh, so therefore i am going to replace x of 0 by 1 so therefore what i would get i would get x square and uh, plus here you have a square both have uh, what common x of s i'm collecting this term this term right and what about this term minus s into 1 s into 1 and that is equal to 0 if i simplify and get an expression for x of s you get exactly what you got for cos right so this is what exactly you got for cos and from a control engineering perspective this is a, a very very difficult function to interpret because you have an s term in the numerator you will study if you are an electronics engineer but uh, we don't get into those details but if you looked at uh, this because here the motion incepted from the mean position you don't have an s term in the numerator that is one of the advantages that is you are incepting your uh, uh you know motion from the mean position from the equilibrium position right so that is very very important to observe so it has been very very emphatically uh, said that uh, whenever you confront uh, the laplace transform of a function that means you have uh, converted the time domain response to frequency domain that means uh, this is uh, the result of uh, the conversion of a differential equation and the boundary conditions are very very important you saw that uh, because we assumed the right boundary conditions we could get s in the numerator otherwise we would not have and also here in the previous uh, uh, one we assumed the correct boundary condition so that we could get only a and what is very very important here is that the natural frequency is a and amplitude is 1 so velocity is uh, a into omega n which is nothing but omega n which is nothing but a because 1 into a so therefore that is what we have got so now whenever you confront an expression for laplace transform you exactly will be able to relate that to particular physics of course in some cases the physics could be complex in some cases it could be very straight forward so let me recollect what uh, we did we in fact started with uh, this differential equation which is called the 1d modeling and whenever you are uh, modeling a system by a differential equation what are very very important are boundary conditions 
now physically you are appreciating what is going on what exactly i mean by initial boundary conditions here if you are incepting from uh, equilibrium your displacement is zero your velocity is maximum that is where you start going to the extreme there you exhaust all your kinetic energy your velocity becomes zero but you have achieved the maximum displacement or amplitude and then you start coming back and then here again the velocity will be in the opposite direction you go up and come back and that is how it oscillates and when i wrote the laplace transform expression for derivative and incorporated the right boundary condition for the first case the right boundary condition said that your velocity is maximum but displacement is zero so we could simplify get an expression for sine because uh, y is equal to sine at is the solution of this differential equation for uh, the motion incepting from the mean position now secondly what we did we in fact uh, said that velocity is uh, zero uh, because you have exhausted everything when you started uh, when you reached the extreme position so here the displacement is maximum so i incorporated that displacement and then when i simplified i could get uh, exactly s by s square uh, plus a square here the solution of the differential equation if you are starting from this extreme position is y is equal to cos at again amplitude is 1 why because your initial displacement itself when you when t is equal to 0 is 1 of course here we have used the symbolism x so don't get confused when i write x because x is used for displacement so at t is equal to 0 it is 1 so therefore uh, the solution of the differential equation uh, the differential equation i'm talking about is this when you are starting from extreme position is uh, x equal to cos at otherwise it is x equal to sin at so this gives you a detailed appreciation of uh, the laplace transform versus physical systems right so let's move on and also one advantage is uh, you have actually learned how to deal with differential equations which i haven't covered yet so therefore double advantage for you let's move on and look at more discussions well engineering and math are absolutely inseparable we innovations day in and day out try our level best to make math as simple as possible and also of great practical value to every aspiring engineer do you want us to reach the masses please like us share and subscribe do not forget to turn on the bell icon